Good evening. I call to order the regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees of the Village of Burr Ridge for January 27, 2020. <clears throat> Tonight, we are privileged to be led in the pledge by two fine young ladies. We have with us Ava and Alexa Kupetis. Uh, Ava is 10 years old, and she's in the fifth grade at St. Isaac Joe's. <clears throat> she loves swimming, horseback riding, art, and fashion. She swims for Five Seasons Swim Club in the summer and swims competitively year-round for the Hinsdale Swim Club. Ava recently broke her leg, but is nearly fully recovered and anxious to get back to swimming and her horses. Her interest includes that she wants to be a fashion designer one day when she grows up, and she dreams of going to college to study fashion design. <clears throat> in her spare time, she uses scrapbook paper and fabric scraps to sketch dress designs. Her younger sister, Alexa, is also here. Alexa is seven years old and in second grade at St. Isaac Joe's. <clears throat> Alexa loves dancing, horses, softball, and just started playing basketball. Alexa is very curious and loves to figure out how things work. She often has a collection of rocks or various nature items that she carefully inspects and is always asking questions. Making slime out of all sorts of things is her specialty. <clears throat> Alexa loves to cook and bake and work uh, uh, like uh, to open a coffee shop and, and she would like to open a co coffee shop one day. However, her big sister is convinced that she will be an inventor. Her parents are Michael and Holly uh, Kupetis. Her mom, Holly, is here tonight. Uh, Ava and Alexa, please come up and lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Schiappa. Here. Trustee Cabeza. Here. Trustee Schneider. Here. Trustee McCall. Here. Trustee Motto. Present by phone. Mayor Grasso. Here. Uh, in order for Trustee Motto to appear by phone, we will need a motion by one of the trustees to. Right. Uh, uh, Trustee Model, please express the reason why you're not at the meeting. Yes, I'm out of town on business today. Okay, in order for him to be allowed to <coughs> participate again by phone, I note also that Trustee Model has called in <coughs> on July 22nd. He missed the meeting on August 12th. He called in again on August 26th, and he missed the meeting on November 25th. This will be the fifth time he's either missed or called in. <clears throat> so we need a motion if any trustee is willing to make a motion. Is any trustee willing to make a motion? The request fails for lack of motion. Please disconnect. Okay. All right. So um, let, that'll take us to presentations of public hearings. We have no presentations or public hearings tonight, correct, Doug? Uh, that is correct. All right. <clears throat> the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda discussed by the board, open for public comment, and voted upon during this meeting. <coughs> Five minutes. A, approval of regular board meeting of January 13, 2020. B, receive and file street policy committee meeting of January 13, 2020. C, receive and file plan commission meeting of January 20, 2020. 
D, receive and file ad hoc complete count committee meeting of January 21, 2020. Six ordinances A, approval of an ordinance amending section 4131 entitled offenses related to drugs of Article 3 entitled other offenses of Ch Chapter 41 entitled offenses of the Burr Ridge Village Code. <coughs> B, approval of an ordinance amending the Burr Ridge Municipal Code by adding a new Chapter 22 entitled business license. Seven, resolutions adopting adoption of a resolution approving the annual publication of the Village of Burr Ridge zoning map. B, adoption of re resolution uh, for maintenance under the Illinois Highway Code, appropriating motor fuel tax funds for the 2020 road program. Eight considerations, B, approval of recommendation from the Plan Commission to approve a text amendment to the zoning ordinance to add child care center as a special use in the L1 light industrial district and a special use as per the amended section <coughs> XE2 of the zoning ordinance to permit a child care center at the subject property Z03-2020, 6880 North Frontage Road, Hayes. Approve C, approval of request from the Plan Commission to conduct public hearings to consider an amendment to the zoning ordinances regarding plan, landscaping and prairie grasses, solar panels, short-term residential rentals, and definitions of the zoning ordinance, PCO1 2020 Annual Zoning Review. D, approval of recommendation to award a professional services contract for design engineering on the Elm Street Culvert Replacement Project to Hampton, uh, Lenzini, and Renwick, Inc. of Woodbridge, Illinois in, the, in an amount not to exceed thirty thousand dollars. E approval of award uh, approval to award a contract to Federal Signal Safety and Security Systems of University Park, Illinois, for upfitting police squad cars in the amount of twenty one thousand two forty four fifty five. F approval of recommendation to hire a patrol officer for vacant position. G approval of recommendation to promote a patrol officer to the rank of corporal. H, approval of nomination to reappoint Joe Patak to the Police Pension Board for a term expiring on February 1, 2022. I, approval of nomination to reappoint Ray Lucas to the plan to the Police Pension Board for a term expiring on May 1, 2022. J, approval of nomination to appoint Richard Morton and Father Theodore Labib, Labib to the uh, Ad Hoc Complete Count Committee. <coughs> K, approval of request for raffle license for Our Lady of Peace School and hosting facility license for Marriott Hotel Burr Ridge for its fundraising event on March 21, 2020. And L, approval of vendor list <coughs> dated January 27, 2020 in amount of $613,106.77 for all funds plus $209,820.33 for payroll for the period ending January 11, 2020 for a grand total of $822,927.10, which includes specialist expenditures of $14,488.76 to Thomas Engineering Group for the 2020 Water Main Replacement Project and $238,705.49 to Intergovernmental Risk Management Agency, IRMA, for our 2020 annual insurance contribution. <coughs> After all of that reading, can I have a motion to, uh, for the following items on the consent agenda? Five minutes A through D, six ordinances A, B, seven resolutions A and B, eight considerations B through L. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Francis? Yes. yes. Trustee Mattal? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Pavesa? <coughs> Trustee Pavesa? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. 5 0. 5 0, the motion passes. That takes us all the way down to eight considerations. A. <coughs> Consideration of Street Policy Committee recommendation to approve the 2020 road program. David, good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Board of Trustees. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to prevent the pre present the information <coughs> as given to the Street Policy Committee at their meeting on January 13th, which in summary will be the, um, the completion of the 2019 Capital Improvements Program, 
um, talking about our street rating and how we develop a road program, and then um, to propose our 2020 road program for budget <coughs> consideration and our bid document preparation moving forward. Um, so the 2019 capital improvements program was completed on the next slide, um, which came down to the wire. Um, if you had seen me at Jingle Mingle and asked me if we were going to finish Burr Ridge Parkway, I <coughs> told you probably not. Um, but favorable weather persisted back into the end of November and early December, and we were able to finish the paving and the striping. Um, Burr Ridge Parkway was 80% um, funded by a grant, the STP LAFO grant, uh, provided 80%. The remaining 20% was through our motor fuel tax and um, also covered the, the um, engineering contracts. Which in summary, of all those projects, both Burr Ridge Parkway and our internal road program, which was resurfacing, crack sealing, pavement marking, and the other contracts, um, totaled over 1.4 million this last year, so <coughs> thankfully that is completed. Also completed um, on the next slide is over 61 miles of roadway every two years we assess through our street rating survey. Um, this was completed in, uh, in middle of summer. Um, this detailed form has been used ever since 2007, so we've got a consistent methodical evaluation of all our streets over the years. Um, with this detailed form, we develop a pavement condition rating. Starting at 100, each of these defects uh, contributes to a, a deduction, some sort of deficiency in the pavement from which we develop a PCR, a pavement condition rating. Um, this year overall, we found our streets to be in a, in a good condition. Um, as we'll see on the next slide, <coughs> streets that are not um, get thrown into a road program. Through the tabulation of pavement condition ratings, we can start to schedule and, and identify streets for the right maintenance at the right time. Um, crack ceiling over the years is much cheaper and can maintain a pavement in good condition. If a street is left to go for too long for um, too much deterioration, then it would require resurfacing, which is a little bit more intrusive and more expensive. To try to stretch our budget dollars year after year, we are, again, trying to target the right street for the right treatment at the right time. So the overall road program um, uses all that data from the pavement condition ratings and our assessment of those streets to identify which streets would get scheduled then. So how we budget for the road program uh, has been interesting over the years. Um, this is just a, I caught a question last week about how much are we spending, as you'll see on the next slide, um, in comparison to other towns. Um, Burr Ridge over the last six years has spent about an average of $756,000. Um, again, that's a combination of resurfacing, crack sealing, and all of our payment maintenance programs. Um, that's an average because last year was quite a bit more as we um, capitalized on the STP grant, but over the last six years, that's about our average. This in 2019 was a snapshot of what other towns have done. As you can see, some have had to do things like referendums. Um, one of them being the, uh, Western Springs had the roadway referendum in 2016 to get their funds up and get their streets maintained. Um, so, but, but ours, we've, we've tried to, at least for the next year, maintain the status quo of about that three quarters of a million. Um, but the one interesting point is our motor fuel tax on the bottom of that screen. For the last 29 years, it was the same from the state at 19 cents per gallon. Uh, this past year, the uh, General Assembly increased that from 19 cents to 38 cents, um, thereby doubling the state tax on gas. Um, but municipalities won't see that same doubling in their motor fuel tax, but that does uh, increase substantially and, and is gonna be a great benefit to our road program. So on the next slide, you'll see how that historically played out. Um, going all the way back to 1996, this was kind of the history of the road program budgets. Um, with the peak there in uh, 1.4 million in 2001. And then we've kind of leveled out over the years. Uh, and again, over the last six years, they averaged about 756,000. We will maintain that status quo for the next two years, we projected. Um, but years after that, uh, we, we project an increase. And one of the reasons being is that in 2001, uh, we got a whole slug of streets done for 1.4 million at the cost of the asphalt back then was $35 per ton. Nowadays, that cost is at almost at $70 per ton. It was 68 this last bid. So we're doing just under two miles of roads. So we've got a backlog of streets coming due. They're over 20 years old. So we kind of foresee that coming and we project a, an increase needed in road program budgets um, in years to come. But again, we're trying to stretch out the dollars we can with um, other aggressive pavement maintenance strategies like our crack ceiling program. <coughs> um, so maintaining that status quo for the next year, as you'll see in our budget, um, this is our targeted list of streets for resurfacing in the Devon Ridge subdivision um, down south of 91st Street and then with the Lake Ridge subdivision, 81st Street, Lake Ridge Drive, Lake Ridge um, Court, Ridge Point Drive, 
um, just over there in the central part of town. Then up in the northeast corner, um, Aaron Lane is a small street, kind of been for, forgotten over the last few years, I don't know why. Just off of Plainfield Road in Garywood. Uh, we're gonna get to that before the tollway uh, impacts us on Plainfield Road. Uh, so that list of streets is proposed for resurfacing this year. We'll target our crack ceiling again like we do every three year, after a three year program and after a five year program to get to those, um, and to kind of get the cracks before they deteriorate the street too much. The map you see here is just kind of a snapshot of where we've been over the last five years. In black is the, the road program, so you can see that we've distributed not by any sort of means of, of county or, or quadrant or anything else, but other than you know, based on, on our pavement condition rating and trying to schedule around other projects or improvements. We're not going to hit a street if there's a lot of um, you know, new permitted construction going on at the same time. We'll wait till that's over. Uh, but then in gold then is shown our 2020 projected list of streets. Again, the Devon Ridge subdivision, uh, the Lake Ridge group, and then the, um, the Longfield Lane, the Aaron Lane. And then in brown is just anticipated maybe what we what we expect to see in 2021 next year. Uh, so to conclude on the last slide, that list of streets and at our targeted road program uh, for resurfacing crack sealing, the, the cost uh, results on the, on the last slide in an amount of about $754,000 um, just overall. Uh, with the motor fuel tax increase is now up to $414,000. Um, on the left side, you'll see that the balance uh, remaining then the, for the general fund impact is about $339,000. So the uh, staff is asking for direction to proceed to prepare bid documents, um, as was approved by the Street Policy Committee uh, two weeks ago. Um, again, the actual road program budgets will be based as, as we you know, figure things out um, over the next course of the weeks. But and again, also with the actual um, bids received, as we would anticipate sometime in um, early March. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Let me start out before, before the, and give the trustees a chance. Um, <clears throat> I have had the uh, great privilege of chairing the Roads Committee um, with uh, present with uh, uh, Trustee uh, Schiappa and uh, and also Trustee uh, Francis. Um, and I, I just want to commend uh, the village, this board, in the past past boards have always making the roads in Burr Ridge a priority. Um, I think that the road program that has been developed uh, under the administrations here should be something to be shared with DuPage mayors and managers, with uh, the Illinois Municipal League. Um, we saw just uh, to the north of us uh, what might happen if you don't have a regular road program, and, and I believe one of the hallmarks of living in Burr Ridge are the great roads that we have here. And it's, on, it's because of leadership from you and Doug and others uh, and this board uh, that we have that. And so uh, it's really important, I think, that the, uh, and I think the residents appreciate it, but I do want to recognize uh, th this great program and all the hard work that you guys put in. So with that, uh, anybody, uh, any of the trustees want to comment or ask any questions? Yes, Tony? Yeah, I, I agree. I think our, you can, I can see a noticeable, the, the noticeable difference when I drive into the Ridge versus Cincinnati over there. Um, and my neighbors that moved into town from Evanston had mentioned the same thing, that our roads are very well maintained, um, very, very nice to drive on. So, but I agree. Yes, indeed. I just wanted to commend you for doing such a wonderful job. We have one of the best roads in the area with the least amount of expenses, so compared to other people, so very nice job. Very sure. nice road to Burridge. Thank you, Dave, as always, to you and your staff. Also, last year, I think, or the year before, didn't you, we were able to get some other villages in partnership with some asphalt. We're going to look into that again also, you can lower, get the fund down or the cost down a little bit more. We did that with a concrete program? Right. Right. With the and salt program. as well, I think. Right? And, and, and salt, salt as well. Yeah. So is this program also in that particular? Resurfacings haven't been because they're particular um, to how different towns treat their streets. Um, quantities and things like that vary from location to location, so they've got been successful <coughs> in a, a joint bid on a resurface in Downers Grove, tried it years and years ago, and it just didn't work out. It's a good question, though. I mean, it's more successful with the concrete program and crack seal. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody uh, before I um, call for, oh, Guy, sorry. Yeah, so. <clears throat> 
the other trustees may know this, they may not, but uh, certainly the residents need to know that there's 14 objective measuring sticks that uh, the village engineer and his staff go and survey each roadway in our village once every two years as an objective measure of measuring. And they come back with a, a sur the survey on each road, each piece of pavement in the village, and that determines which road gets, which gets attention when. And then this is tracked over the years, and it's compared to for previous years. So this is, this is done with a, quite a bit of hard analysis. It is it's not something that, that just is done without any thought. <coughs> I commend the staff on, on this program. It's, uh, it's what the mayor is referring to earlier that should be shared with the other, the other villages. Uh, the roadways in our village benefit not only the residents, but, but of course the businesses and the employees of those businesses, as well as the visitors who come to our shops and to our restaurants to enjoy what we have to offer here in the village. And certainly, uh, I know that if I go into the city or if I go into some other suburb and that town is riddled with potholes and crumbling streets, I have second thoughts about going there. It's just another reason not to go there and to stay in, in our own village here. So thank you to our staff and to our employees for a wonderful road program. <clears throat> okay, any comment from the public? All right, uh, can I get a motion uh, to direct staff uh, to prepare? It's a motion to approve. Approve? Yes. Or is it approve direct the recommendation? Yes. Okay, thank you. A motion to approve the recommendation for the 2020 road program, please. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mattal? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Pavesa? Yes. 5 0. 5 0, the motion passes. All right, that takes us to public comment. Um, uh, let me make a comment before I ask the public to comment. Um, last week, there was uh, last meeting, there was a vote taken on, on the Beauty Lane project. Um, I uh, believe I looked around in the audience to see if anybody had any questions, and I don't believe anybody did. Uh, but um, Trustee Model brought up that <clears throat> he thought that uh, I had failed to do that. Uh, to the extent I failed to do that, I certainly apologize, but we did uh, uh, try to find if anybody w uh, wanted to say anything at that time, and, and we came to the conclusion that those that wanted to speak uh, did speak, and that uh, we did not overlook any, anything. Um, and so I've asked council if we had, applied, had uh, met all the rules uh, for the Beauty Lane vote, and I've been assured that we acted appropriately. Um, to the extent that I failed to uh, ask, uh, I apologize for that. It was, a, it was an oversight. With that, is there any public comment? Yeah. Yes. I'm sure you all know who I am, but for the record, Awad O'Day, the owner of Apex Motor Works. Uh, I'm sure everybody, uh, each of the board members have received my uh, letter uh, from uh, Doug that I uh, sent and I believe you forwarded to everybody. Um, basically to, to reiterate everything that was said in the letter, I understand in the last board meeting that our application for a special use permit was denied due to the, uh, uh, I don't know what to call them, amendments or suggestions made on my part. Uh, I've since spoken to Doug and Evan and uh, the mayor uh, on one occasion regarding this and uh, Basically, uh, I'm here tonight to ask for you to reconsider this vote and to find it in your hearts to allow us to continue this year of uh, what we called in, in the meeting that I was at previously, not the previous one, but the one before that, a, a, a time for us to prove ourselves to the village. Uh, I will just say one thing about these uh, amendments or suggestions that I, I made uh, that were brought before you in the last meeting, which I didn't attend. Uh, due to health purposes, uh, to health issues, uh, and that's that I didn't expect that it was something that was out of the norm. Uh, I was under the impression that it's okay to uh, suggest amendments, and if the amendments don't pass, the original motion would pass and I would get the special use. So uh, I was under the, the complete impression that I was within protocol and, and the norm, so to say. With that said, I apologize if any of you are offended, if anybody took it personally, if I wasted anybody's time. That was not the intention by all means. Uh, and I'm hoping that you will find it in your heart to reconsider and, and allow us uh, the chance to not lose a ton of money and uh, to continue in our business. 
Okay, is there anyone willing to make a motion? Is there any other public comment on this issue as to Apex Motors? Um, is there any trustee willing to make a motion to reopen this discussion? There's no trustee willing to make a motion. Thank you. <coughs> Is there any other public comment? Yes. Good evening, Mayor Grasso and board. My name is Patricia Schiappa. I'm a resident of Burr Ridge, and in full disclosure, I am Trustee Schiappa's wife. Um, thank you to the mayor for the appointment to the Complete Census Committee and to the majority of the board members for your approval. We have already had one very productive meeting led by Trustee Mattal and Evan Walters through his incredible guidance. You are very knowledgeable, sir. And I'm sure that uh, Trustee Mattal will eventually update the board um, on our progress. Unfortunately, I am here tonight to respond to the defamatory comments made by Trustee Mattal about me at the last board meeting which were made in connection with my appointment to the Complete Count Committee for Burr Ridge. I was hoping that he would be here tonight so that I could respond to him in person. Um, I'm going to proceed as if he will eventually listen to my comments. I was not in attendance at the meeting as my family and I were traveling. We had a great long weekend only to return to a number of messages from community members. Many had contacted me to advise me of trustee models disparaging remarks. My initial response was, it's typical, it's a trustee model, this is who he is, this is how he responds. We have all witnessed him respond and retaliate against other private citizens, public officials and community leaders who do not share his vision or ideologies. And I knew this was status quo for him. But then I thought enough is enough. I, needed to, I felt compelled to respond to defend my character and I also worried about the ramifications of his comments and how it would have, what it would have on the future volunteers of Burr Ridge. So let me start off with Trustee Model's condescending and misogynistic remarks when he said that the only reason I was being appointed was because I was Tony's wife. First, there is no greater honor than being Tony's wife. But let me also tell you that I'm a mother of three children. I'm a practicing lawyer. I sit on the board for Our Lady of Peace School. I sit on the board for the Hinsdale South Booster Club. I volunteer for many charitable organizations and have made time now to become a member of the committee uh, census Committee for Burr Ridge. Trustee Model made allegations at the last board meeting that for legal reasons I am not going to repeat here tonight, but I am going to say that his statements are false and I will wait for his retraction and apology from him individually and in the capacity as a trustee representing the vil village of Burr Ridge as a whole. In an attempt to set the record straight, he has forced me to respond to the false public comments, however. He indicated he, quote, watches me around town Here's what he's probably watched and why he made the defamatory comments. What I have done as a private citizen with the collaboration of hundreds, hundreds of other Burr Ridge residents is voice my objection to his mayoral candidacy in the last election and voice my objection to how he treated private individuals and public individuals, officials in Burr Ridge and surrounding communities. That is my constitutional right to do so. I became his vocal opponent as I was embarrassed at how he was treating the residents of Burr Ridge and the residents of surrounding communities. This was not the temperament that I thought was appropriate for a village leader. I don't know Trustee Model personally. I met him once when he was sworn in as a trustee. He lost to Mayor Grasso in the mayoral election and he continues, as we have all seen, to have tantrums in the boardroom, which were, are illustrative of everyone's initial concerns that he lacks the correct temperament for public service, as we repeatedly witness his retaliation and attacks on Mayor Grasso, the board, and even village employees. It is no secret that I supported and, to continue, and continue to support Gary Grasso for mayor of Burr Ridge as I promoted that message from the social media rooftops. It is my opinion that this is why you made those defamatory remarks about me. I supported your opposition. I don't know you personally, and the only way you know me is that you again, quote, watched me around town. This is why you mentioned my social media activity. I have had and currently have active social media accounts. There is a load of information that the masses have shared on social media as it pertains to his temperament, including writings from him that were ugly retaliatory responses. When looked at it as a whole, and this is important should he be watching this video in the near future, 
a reasonable person can easily see that there is a pattern and practice of harassment, bullying, and intimidation by him as a public official. What you have watched around town is content that is related to a matter of public concern during a mayoral election. Trustee Model, you should be reminded that there is a wonderful concept called free speech. It's a legal concept with which you have repeatedly demonstrated you have a problem understanding. This is not the first time he's retaliated against me because of statements I made again on social media. Again, I don't know this man personally. When the sterogenics crisis broke out, you sent a foul mouth writing to my husband complaining that I had, quote, I see your wife is talking blank about me, end quote. By way of background, when the crisis reared its ugly head, the Burridge Board, then led by Mayor Straub, could not form a quorum for several meetings so that the residents could attend and ask about this company that was leaking poison into our community. So the community went to social media, and so did I. I was reading very angry comments about things and things that were being said about the board members and the village of Burridge as a whole, and I assure you they were not nice at all. But people were scared. I understood where they were coming from. What I shared with my neighbors was that my husband was ready, willing, and able to attend board meetings and was trying to take calls to try to answer the concerns of the residents in the meantime. I knew that trustees uh, Franzis and Paveza were also attempting to schedule a board meeting to do the same. This clearly upset you. It begs the question, why? So in re response to my defending my husband in the village, you sent a threatening writing to my husband telling him that you were going to teach him a lesson because of my comments on social media, and then you did just that at the very next board meeting. You tried to muddy his name with some twisted, convoluted allegation that had no merit on its face. It's what you try to do at the last wording with me, but I have come to learn that that is who you are. This is your MO. Here's another important part. If you had a legitimate concern about me, you should have removed the item from the agenda and requested discussion in closed session. You know that procedure or you should have known that procedure. In the alternative, you could have tabled the discussion and welcomed me to an open meeting to learn more about me. Instead, in what is a pattern and practice of harassment, you chose a public forum to attempt to humiliate and embarrass me, a private citizen, to volunteer to serve private citizen attempting to volunteer to serve the village. It is my opinion that you did so with malice. In sum, I hope the general public has a better appreciation of who I am and who he is. Trustee Model has been repeatedly criticized for attempting to stifle the speech of residents and non-residents alike. There is overwhelming evidence that if you disagree with Trustee Model, he will retaliate against you in some shape, way, some shape, way, or form. His behavior is unbecoming of a public official and, in my opinion, violative of our Constitution. Whether you outright deny a citizen the right to speak or whether you attempt to harass or humiliate them, I think it's a constructive violation of our First Amendment. You are violating one of the most important tenets to the maintenance of a democratic government. All public officials will experience, to some degree, criticism from the public. Even if the criticism is vociferous and unpleasant in nature, it comes with the territory. I admit that Trustee Model experienced an extraordinary amount, but you made your own bed. Rather than encourage and participate in spirited debates, you have made and continue to make contemptuous and outrageous accusations on social media, and then you forbid the general public from responding. You are a public official, yet you continue to complain about political speech when it doesn't flatter you, which is at the core of what the First Amendment protects. You know this, or you should know this. So my final comment, and I'm wrapping this up, and thank you for indulging me, because I'm sure I've gone over my five minutes, but I'm not here to complain about a crooked sidewalk or a improper street cleaning issue. This is my character that I'm here to, to talk about. He has unconscionably, unconscionably attacked the mayor of Burridge, the former mayor of Burridge, volunteers, employees, even somehow managed to bring in the chief of police, to name a few. So I say to you now, thank you for including me in great company. Thank you, Mayor and the Board of Trustees for your time this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Scala. <clears throat> Is there any other public comment? Yes, please. yes, you can. Please come up. So, I attended zoning meetings and the board meeting that had to do with our special use permit 
we've gone through a lot of issues. We've had a lot of faults. We've admitted our faults. We've immediately after the, the board meeting that I attended, we followed the, the, the points that we needed to follow, the signs, the, the website, anything else that we needed to do to make sure that we were abiding by the conditions set on us. I was told the day after the board meeting that I attended by a staff member that we can sit down and discuss some of the points that were brought forth in the meeting that I attended. I sat with that staff member a couple of days later and was given reassurances that there is nothing wrong with bringing up these points in front of the board in the following board meeting. And the exact words of that staff member was, you're not asking for too much. I don't think you're asking for too much. Now, I'm not familiar with the way the politics of the village works or, or the, the, the workings of the legal system within the village. All I know is I'm, I own a business. I have an issue with the license. I want to try to fix it and do whatever is necessary to fix that, that issue. So I missed the last meeting because my wife rushed me to the hospital at 5 p.m. almost. If I was in my right mind, I would have sent my brother to that meeting to appear before you and to talk about those points. I was not in my right mind. I totally forgot when I was sitting in the hospital that I was even supposed to be at a meeting. And then the next day I find out that Evan tells me on the phone that you guys denied the permit and the vote was three to two. And I came today hoping to see at least a vote to reopen the discussion and to give us the chance that we spoke about and not even one of the two that voted for us that day are willing to do that and I'm just shocked. So my question is, what changed between then and now that we're prevented the chance to even come before you in a formal meeting on the agenda to discuss this? What, what is this how the village works to put a business that spent nearly half a million dollars in the village? We abided by every law, every rule that was imposed on us with the parking lot, the lighting, the landscaping that we were told to do, which on those three things alone, we spent nearly $100,000 just to make sure that the building on the outside looked the way other buildings in Burr Ridge look. I'm just, honestly, I'm, I'm in, in awe. I'm shocked that you guys will find it so easy to put us out of business just two years in when we literally haven't even turned the profit two years later. We're still struggling for the last four months haven't done business whatsoever almost. And, and I'm just shocked that not a single person is willing to, to raise their hand to, to give us a chance. Mr. O'Day, thank you. Um, there is a long history that you're leaving out uh, that occurred before I became mayor in May of 2019. This board uh, and the prior board and the prior interim mayors and the prior mayor had many, many issues as I look at the record. Um, I believe this board has, and this community, and from my history with this board and this community, bends over backwards to make things work. And I believe this board did that. And you still exhausted its patience. And so, um, it isn't my practice to address public comment, but I want to make the record clear that I believe this board uh, gave you every opportunity and more from what I've reviewed that happened before I was mayor and since. And I have to, and you have to, respect their opinion. And there is no trustee willing to make a motion. Thank you. I have nothing but respect for everybody's opinion here, no matter what the decision and the outcome is. The issue is not respect. God knows that I have respect for everybody in this room. I, I mean, you tell me, what, what, what are we supposed to do now? It's a, it's well, a family sir, I cannot of... address that tonight. As I took your call um, last week, I will take your call tomorrow if you call. Is there any this chance that you can ask now. again? The if there's anybody was to willing. see if someone was going to support <coughs> that hasn't happened. If you wish to call me tomorrow, I'm more than happy to discuss it with you. I, I totally understand that and I appreciate it. But and Mr. Seeing Day, as what you've said, I know you respect it, but uh, there's an old adage actions speak louder than words. And that's all I want the chance to prove to you. I understand. You may call me tomorrow, as I said, and you have my cell phone too. Feel free to call. Uh, tonight, I don't think it's the, that this issue is closed. 
I don't have your cell phone. If, if there's a chance, I can meet you after the meeting to get it from you to talk. It's, it's, I think it's on the website, but if not, uh, um, Evan has it. He'll give okay. it to you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay. <clears throat> That takes us to reports and communications from village officials, item 10. Are there any reports and communications? Yes, sir. I just want to talk about the complete plan. Yes, oh, um, and, and oh, by the way, I, a point to be made, <clears throat> while um, Mrs. Schiappa thanked me uh, for appointing her to, the, uh, or nominating her to uh, for this board to approve her to be on the committee, that was with the pre-approval as I always do, as every mayor always does, in speaking with the chairperson who certainly wanted you on the committee, and that is Trustee Matal. So while I appreciate your thanks, it is, uh, is also, and I'm sure it's directed to Trustee Matal. With that, thank you. All right. Well, um, it's that time of the year again, once in <clears throat> 10 years, the Complete Count Committee. Every person counts, <clears throat> and I want to thank uh, uh, Richard Morton and uh, Mrs. Kiappa for you know joining us today. Um, we, we had a lovely meeting last Tuesday and um, everyone should participate in it because just to kind of uh, tell you why, um, this happens once in 10 years and they form, um, they determine the House of Representatives based on the census count. Redistricting is done based on the census count and um, Last time, they distributed $675 billion based on the census count. So needless to say, <laughs> if you have a higher count, our village is going to get more money for various things, uh, for village programs, roads, schools, hospitals, all of that good stuff. So it's very important to be counted and participate in the count. Um, when is it going to happen? Um, apparently, middle of March, they're going to send you emails. You can. Uh, participate via email, you can participate via phone or mail in your census um, voucher. Um, there are lots of jobs available as well and I hear they pay quite well. If you go on to census 2020 jobs, you should be able to find more information. Um, if you have anybody who needs to understand this better, has questions, feel free to ask them to reach out to us. Uh, that being said, if anyone has any ideas how we can reach some people who we might have missed last time, feel free to reach out to me or one of the uh, members of the committee and uh, see how we can help. All right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Al? <clears throat> Just a comment that I want to make <clears throat> about, the, uh, about being a trustee. Uh, when we decide to run for trustee, we expect to, the time and the dedication that's required. And one of the things, we're all involved in business, we all travel, we all work somewhere else, and we do whatever we can to make our schedule such that we're here uh, at meeting dates and other special dates. And the one comment I wanna make is that I think you remember him, Gary, years ago, we had a very, very good trustee. And when he informed us he wasn't gonna run for a re-election, we were surprised. And the main reason he said he wasn't gonna run, he got a promotion in his company, and he, dealt, he, he had no control over his schedule, where he was gonna be, and he couldn't guarantee that he was gonna be at the meetings. So, I mean, we lost a very good trustee, but he, knew that he couldn't make the meetings as planned, so he just didn't run for re-election. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Al. Anyone else? <clears throat> yes, yes, Tony? Um, so <clears throat> I'd also like to address Trustee Model's comments that he made, uh, his public comments about my wife at the last board meeting on January 13, 2020, which I was, I was not in attendance. Right, but let me make one thing clear before. Nobody knew Mr. Mr. Model was not going to be here until Correct. late this, I didn't early this afternoon. Uh, and when a trustee is uh, knows that they have a travel schedule uh, and knows that they're on business, um, I believe our rules, Doug, uh, that you're supposed to call in and let us know at least 48 hours in advance. Um, and and that also was happening <coughs> today. And um, 
So no, we did not know and we fully expected Mr. Model to be here tonight. Go ahead. Well, full disclosure, I wasn't there, but I notified Burridge about two weeks beforehand. So right. just let it go. Um, anyway, back to his comments on Monday, January 13th, 2020. Uh, they were offensive and distaste, distasteful. My wife is an upstanding citizen and contributor to our family, schools, state, and village. And to make public remarks about a volunteer like you did, I'm assuming that he's here, like he did on January 13th, was uncalled for as a public official. Your comments about people that do not agree with you are childish and deplorable. As a public official, you are held to a higher standard and open to the opinions of your constituents, whether you agree with them or not. From your actions, it looks like that he only, he only wants to hear from those people that, he, that agree with him. All other opinions get a taste of his har harassment and bullying. His commenting about a private citizen and volunteer by name in public is intolerable. When we sit up here, we follow Robert's rules of procedure. Mayor Grasso maintains the focus of our meetings. The television cameras are here to give information, relay the meetings to our residents. They are not for entertainment. We are not a daytime talk show program. You continue to be a volatile element at the village board meetings, and it's simply to create headlines. At the last board meeting, you accused Mayor Grasso of pay-to-play politics. I'd like to share a screen with you to see if pay-to-play politics was employed by you. Doug, if you can put that on the screen for me. This is a, this is, these are minutes. These are minutes of our board meeting, October, uh, August 26, 2019. As you can see, I've highlighted the consent agenda. So the consent agenda is when we approve multiple things on an agenda and we all agree that this, those items should be approved. As you can see, my name, wait, Doug. Trustees Schiappa, Mittal, Model, Franzese, Paveza, and Snyder, Snyder approved what, what the items on the consent agenda. One of those items on the consent agenda was the approval of an ordinance granting an amendment to a planned unit, unit development ordinance to add co-working office space as a first floor special use in building six of the village center. And a special use for a co-working office space in building six of the village center, Z11 2019, 800 Village Center Drive, Hassan. Well, earlier that, that year, about 20 weeks earlier, Zach had received a contribution from the, the Burr Ridge Village Center, which he did not recuse himself from this ordinance, but has recused himself from voting on Sephora and moving the concerts. Um, I, I have to confirm the, the concerts. But he accepted, you know, and there, there are a couple of issues here. So he accepted that money from the Burridge Village Center. He voted to move the concerts. He did vote to move he, the he concerts. He voted to approve Ramsey's request. OK, but he abstained from Sephora. Yes. OK. He received that money knowing full well that the new ownership would be presenting to us new ideas and programs that would require our consideration. So he knew full well, accepting that money, that that Burridge Village Center owner was going to come to us with, with considerations, ordinances, and resolutions to, to approve. So I mean, he, he questions trustees on this board for accepting donations years before they've had to vote on an ordinance. He accepted a donation 21 weeks before his vote on LifeWorks, which is the co-working space. Do I think his vote was bought? No, I don't, I don't think so. OK. You know, it, it looks like it because he's recused himself from the remaining considerations, resolutions, and ordinances. I don't think that vote was, was purchased. I think he received some money, and he does vote you know, what he feels is right for the, for the village of, of Burridge normally. So with that, um, I want to move towards demanding a retraction and an apology to my wife, Patricia Schiappa, for his comments made about her on January 13th, 2020. And I demand his resignation as a trustee for the village of Burr Ridge for his inappropriate behavior towards our staff, our citizens, our fellow trustees, and our mayor. Thank, Thank you, John.
Um, I, I want to echo uh, this point um, in, in this context. Trustee model has, makes lots of offhanded comments, um, interrupts people, he uses the word corruption and pay to play, and he, and he demeans people. He demeaned uh, Trustee Faveza last week, the last meeting. And, and he often says, uh, well, somebody got a contribution, and therefore um, th their vote must be bought. No one believes that anybody's vote is bought. And the point here is that trustee model has repeatedly attacked people on this board for accepting a don donation and then later, in one case, two and a half years later, voting on something. But here, it's okay for trustee model. Now, he didn't do anything wrong. No one believes that his vote was bought, nor were the other votes bought. But he makes it sound like other board members are corrupt because they accept the donation. And yet, he doesn't acknowledge it when he accepts a donation and votes. Now, there was nothing wrong with him accepting a donation. But if his standard is that if he accepts a donation from someone, and he can't vote or shouldn't vote for that, then he shouldn't accept any donations. And he certainly should not have accepted a donation from the Village Center when we all know that many, many projects are going to have to come forward about the Village Center. So in, in his own standards, where he accepts $1,000 from the Village Center for his campaign, he is effectively abrogating his duties as a trustee because he's effectively saying he wouldn't vote on anything that came before the board involving the Village Center, our biggest economic engine in the village. So he is inconsistent, to use a word. Now, I'd like to see this, these comments stopped, and we had hoped these comments would stop but he continues to make them. So I think it's only fair that Trustee Schiappa pointed out that uh, Trustee Model also gets donations and he also votes uh, in favor of things when people have given him donations. Doesn't make his vote wrong. I don't think his vote was wrong. Trustee Schiappa said his vote isn't wrong. But neither are the other people that vote when they get contributions. So, uh, yes. <clears throat> For the last 15 months, I've, had, I've seen Mr. Model, I've listened to Mr. Model, I've watched Mr. Model, and I've read about Mr. Model, how he's badgered, threatened, belittled, harassed, and abused our staff, our wonderful staff. Also, the, he's done this to the District 86 referendum supporters, to the mayor, to those family members of elected <coughs> officials, children and grandchildren who step up and volunteer to say our, recite our wonderful Pledge of Allegiance. This is, behavior is abhorrent. Last meeting, Mr. Model, you reached a new low, even for yourself. You criticized a volunteer of this village during a board meeting, live and in front of the audience. Volunteers are the lifeblood of this village. Staff and our volunteers are our greatest, two greatest resources are, and our best assets. However, you criticize, abuse, and berate them repeatedly. You further went on to make fun of a, of a trust, a sitting trustee directly to him. I'm not going to repeat the comment because I was offended and appalled. How childish, how insulting, how you would degrade a fellow trustee with over 26 years of volunteer service to this village. How childish. I'm offended. This abuse, this criticism, uh, these insults, and this bullying must stop and it must stop now. If you can't stop it on your own, you need to resign. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, I have a few more. <clears throat> um, last November, this board unanimously censured Trustee Model for repeatedly insulting and demeaning our staff and the police chief and our new council. Even though he was censured for this behavior, unprecedented, by the way, as far as I know, in the history of Burr Ridge, he continued to do so 
he continued to disparage the staff in writing. So last week, I directed all staff not to interact with Model at all and told Model that if he needed information to perform his functions, he was to ask me and I would promptly respond to him. A couple of other things. When I became the mayor, I decided to chair the Economic Development Committee. Zach Model had been a longtime member of that committee, and in, in reviewing attendance records for that committee, I discovered that he missed over 40% of the meetings. So I figured that since showing up is 90% of the game, I would replace Zach with someone who would show up, and I did so. And I also note again that since July 22nd, this is the fifth time he has not been present in person for a meeting. Now, another issue I want to address is that Zach, in his own way, has made offhanded statements verbally and in writing about corruption that is in this village, that, he, that this village is corrupt. When challenged, however, to back up his baseless comments, he has hid and evaded me and the chief. I'll give you some examples. When Zach made these comments, which I take seriously and which this board takes seriously, I contacted Chief Madden. And I asked Chief Madden to contact Model to discuss where and how Model believes there is corruption in the village. The chief called Mr. Model, and Mr. Model said that he did not have time to discuss it with the chief of police of Burr Ridge. As a trustee, he did not have time to discuss it with the chief of police because he was going to his parents' <coughs> lake house, but he would call when he got back. Chief Madden is still waiting for that call. When Chief Madden told me that Zach had not called, I directed, asked Chief Madden to call him anyhow. <clears throat> when, uh, when Chief Madden did so, Zach then said he wouldn't speak to the chief about it, that he would instead contact the state's attorney with his information. That would be State's Attorney Berlin, because we are in Burr Ridge, excuse me, we are a DuPage uh, community. <clears throat> when I learned that, I asked, uh, uh, I asked uh, the State's Attorney if they'd been contacted. He had not. So I wrote a letter to State's Attorney Berlin. Can you put it up, please? On November 12, 2019, I directed this letter to State's Attorney uh, Berlin as the mayor of Burr Ridge, since our community had been uh, accused by trustee model as being corrupt, and asked uh, him, uh, asked uh, State's Attorney Berlin to make an independent investigation and to please coordinate any investigation that he deemed warranted with Chief Madden, Deputy Chief Mark Loftus, and the village administrator. I waited several weeks. I then called uh, State's Attorney Berlin, who informed me that he had, he had assigned his top investigator to contact Trustee Model, and when he did so, Trustee Model had no information to give me. This is serious stuff. When you accuse people and a community of corruption, and then don't have the time because you're going to a lake house, and won't speak to the chief of police, and won't answer the state's attorney, it's unfounded and false statements. It's irresponsible. It's cause for this community to demand his resignation. We as a board have no power to do so. <clears throat> Worse yet, he accused me in the last meeting of giving a liquor license against the rules. He made it sound as if that had just happened. 
In fact, as mayor, since May of 2019, I have not signed any restaurant uh, liquor license. What I believe he was referring to is something that happened over 12 years ago. 12 years ago, I was the mayor of this village, and in November of 2008, I discovered that there was uh, a manager in the village that uh, was not listed on a liquor license, and I wanted to know why. And I later found out that uh, this manager had, when he was 17 years old back in 1991, had done a couple of things very wrong. Wrong enough with others that he got caught up in uh, situations and was convicted of a felony, maybe two, out of the same incidents or related incidents. And when I found that out, I barred that person from being a manager. But I learned something that I didn't know. I learned that the state of Illinois actually has laws that allow a fellow to be rehabilitated. It's a high bar, as it should be, no pun intended, I guess. But it's a high bar. I still barred that person from applying for rehabilitation for at least a year. That person asked for rehabilitation in 2011 for an incident that had happened 20 years before in 1991, when he was 17 years old. And by this time, I had come to know this person. And so when he asked for the hearing, I appointed Al Paveza as the hearing to, to, uh, to preside at the hearing. And Al did that. And there was a hearing held, I believe in this boardroom, at the time, where the petitioner, the manager, presented all the things he needed to present. And essentially, it is showing that uh, there have been no further run-ins with the law, that the incidents for which he had trouble with in 1991 did not involve this, this establishment, but, which of course it did not. And that there were people that knew him then and know him now that would vouch for his character. On top of that, the police made a complete investigation to be sure everything was looked at. And that investigation at that time was assigned to our deputy police chief, our now chief, John Matt. Is that right, John? Yes. And John did his investigation and complete and testified and told the hearing board what he found, which was no further run-ins with the law. And this petitioner met all the qualifications and was declared rehabilitated and was therefore under the laws of Illinois eligible for a liquor license and was given one because the law required it. But yet, trustee model wants to throw things around a boardroom and try to hurt. It's just malice to hurt a person that did something wrong years ago and righted it. This is America. We give people second chances, third chances. Not good enough for trustee model. But if it was so wrong, as he implies, which it is not wrong, it's completely within the law, then trustee model, when he was unfortunately the interim mayor of this village for a disastrously six weeks, was also the, the interim liquor commissioner. And if he felt that this was such a wrong thing, he could have done something. Of course, he couldn't have done it because everything had been done according to the procedures that were established by the laws of the state of Illinois. Fellow Burbridge residents, from my perspective, Zach Model is a bully. 
and as my father taught me as a young man, there is only one way to handle a bully, bully, and that is hit him back. The residents of this community need to step up also. This has gone on in this boardroom far too long. We have been far too tolerant of Zach Mob. He needs to resign. We can't do that. Maybe you can. Thank you for your time and patience tonight. Can I get a motion to adjourn to February 10, 20? Oh, let me make one more announcement so that it's clear also. I go on vacation. I go on vacation in February. Since for the last five or six years, I've gone to Sanibel with my wife, Janet. We even invite the kids down as long as they don't stay too long. And so I will not be here on February 10th and I told the staff and everybody weeks in advance, and Mayor Pro Tem Francis will be presiding here. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn to February 10th? Sure. So moved. Second. <coughs> Do we have some, some more public comment? Just a second. I don't really want to get on the mic. Well, you, you'd have it. Okay. Um, this, this is Dolores Cizak's information, which has been well known and has been, been part of this. So I appreciate you, John, bringing this up. I think you're part of this issue, too. Right. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was a long time ago, John. As you know, this was looked at a long time ago. But thank you for bringing it up. Right. I, thank you very much. Okay? Now, with that, you had your opportunity, by the way, of public comment. But thank you for bringing it up. With that, thank you, Mr. Bittner. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn to February 10th, 2020? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.